Hi, this is Luana Rubin from eQuilter.com, and we're here in October 2009 at the Houston Quilt Festival. It's the morning before the show opens, and I'd like to take you on a walk, on a little tour down the aisles to look for some treasures, and also to take a look at some of my favorites in the IQA exhibit. I don't know about you, but when I walk through this show, what really catches my eye is color. And here's a great example of a quilt that has a fabulous use of color by Akimi Sugiyama from Tokyo, Japan. She has a cool analogous color palette. You can see the greens and the purples and the blues and the turquoise. But she makes it kind of pop with a warm purple and a yellowed green. And another thing that really delights me about this piece is I recognize fabrics that we have sold at eQuilter. One of them being Jane Sassaman's dots and also a Hoffman batik. Very cool. This is Lokilani Rose and Maui by Yukiko Tatsu from Japan. And you can always recognize these quilts from Japan by their color story. This is another great cool color story. This has the punch of a bright green and a crocus purple, kind of a kiwi green, instead of that analogous color story, cool color story that we saw in the last Japanese quilt. This is the handmade section of the IQA exhibit, and you'll notice there are a lot of Hawaiian quilts behind us, and many of them are made by Japanese quilters. I have a real interest in Hawaiian quilts because my husband's family live in Hawaii, and I go there every year, and I just love those beautiful Hawaiian colors and patterns, don't you? This is an exhibit by Mary Fisher, a quilt maker who has made these pieces with the faces of children in Africa who have AIDS. And as you probably know, eQuilter does a lot of fundraising for children, for orphans, for those in Africa and around the world who are less fortunate than us, and so this has a lot of deep meaning to me. This fun piece is by Kathy Kelly from Waco, Texas. It's in the art whimsical category, and if you want to talk about wow color, this is it, right? fantastic. This is Pandora by Vicki David and Terry Brazil and it is inspired by an Elizabethan postcard piece of artwork and I just love this also because I've recently been to London and toured the Tower of London and the art museums there and it reminds me of all the beautiful paintings and very exquisite uh, decorative work that I saw there. Isn't it great? This is in the art whimsical category again. This fun quilt by Koyoko Ozona from Yokohama City in Japan is called Sweets. And I'm just crazy about this motif. In fact, one of the first fabric collections I designed was a retro dessert theme. I think Sophie's gonna like this one, don't you? <laughs> so this great piece is by my friend Pamela Allen, Three Women at the Hilton. And what is it about? It's about women staying at the Hilton Hotel at the 2008 Quilt Festival. Can you tell which one is me? Just kidding, I wasn't with her that night. <laughs> This is Quilting Bee de los Muertos by Nancy Arsenhold of Tucson, Arizona. Have you noticed that skeletons are a trend? And so the Day of the Dead images are perfect here at the Quilt Festival. I love this piece because it really honors quilters who have passed on and are still quilting. I love this fabulous use of color by Anne Luley in Lake of the Hills, Illinois. It's called Rose Mandala One, which means she's going to make more of these. Isn't that beautiful? This is Just Sing, Sing a Song by Tom Russell. And this is a great example of a trend that's going on in quilt market and also in graphic design and design in general. And that is birds. Birds and owls are a really hot topic this season. Here's another great bird piece by Kathy Kennedy Dennis. And in this case, we have more realistic birds, but it has exquisite detail in it. So in keeping with this idea about a trend of birds and owls this season, here's a gorgeous piece by David Taylor of Steamboat Springs in Colorado. Take a look at the close detail work in the feathers. I love it. This is Pup Art by Nancy Brown in California. And this is a third place winner, but I have to tell you, last night when they showed it at the award ceremony, the whole audience went, oh. Here's a group of architectural quilts that really caught my eye. You know, I'm a real color person, I tend to go for the brights, but with this motif it really works. I mean, the exquisite detail in all of these earth tones and the value contrast that it uses is really brilliant. Stairway to Heaven by Sally Wright from Los Angeles, California. Mahabat Makbara by Shyamala Rao, Kuwait City. And The Merchant's House by Ruth Powers of Carbondale, Kansas, which depicts an old house in the walled village of Tenby in Wales. Simply Mandalas by Pierre Vernet of Quebec. I love this piece because it's inspired by Tibetan monks and carved marble mandalas. 
I happen to be very interested in Eastern philosophy and this gives me a very peaceful feeling. I feel as if I've just walked into a Tibetan temple. Lovely. This is Winter Solstice by Ricky Salva and it's a simple piece but it really makes an impact. It makes you think of the globe of the planet and it's inspired by sacred sites and archaeological sites in the UK. I love the spiral and I love that she worked it up in Photoshop. This is Media Escaping by Marilyn Belfort, M-E-D-E-A, but it also makes me think of the internet media escaping, like my business, oh my gosh. This is John Lennon Requiem by Robert Mosier and Mary Jane Pliska. Last week when President Obama won the Nobel Peace Prize, right afterwards on the radio, John Lennon's Imagine came on and I have to admit I cried a few tears because I always think of the world it could be when I hear that song, and I think this quilt really expresses that well. This is a quilt that really grabs you as you walk by. It's African Adventure by Janeke de Vries Bozinga from Friesland, Netherlands. There's so much detail in here you have to get real close to see the texture of the boy's hair and the bug on his head, but wow, the color and the contrast is amazing. This lovely piece is by Sonia Bordella of Italy. Sonia took this photo of her son looking out the window in Italy, and that reminds me that, gosh, we're leading a tour of quilters to northern Italy in June of 2010. We're going to Venice, Lake Como, and Milan. I hope that some of you can come with us. And also, we're sponsoring a national quilt challenge for the National Italian Guild, which will be showing here in Houston in 2011 and we'll have about 20 juried quilts that are coming to show you what Italian quilts are all about. Fabulous. This is Sakura by Reiko Yoshida of Tokyo. When you look at it at first you think it's a taupe quilt but then you realize it's full of plum and mauve which is a very strong color theme in fashion and home deck and fabrics this season. It also has a beautiful swirling quality expressing the cherry trees in the springtime in Tokyo and Japan. And you can tell it's Japanese because of all the little hearts fluttering down from the sky. Beautiful. Next January in 2010 I'll be leading a group of quilters to the Tokyo Quilt Festival and then to Kyoto and Nara. And we'll be discovering some of these colors and beautiful early cherry blossoms perhaps in the temples. And checking out some of those taupe and plum and indigo color stories that are at the quilt show there. This is a great example about why I love going to the Tokyo Quilt Festival. Look at these incredible prize-winning quilts from the Yokohama City Show. Wow, fireworks in fabric. This great sparkly piece is by my good friend Bonnie McCaffrey. It illustrates her digibobby technique, and she is the person behind the camera today. Hi, Bonnie. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this very short tour of an incredible, fabulous, humongous exhibit. You've got to come here yourself. I hope that you'll be inspired to come to Houston next year. And these are just a few things that I picked out that I love, but be sure to check online and look at all of the photos of the winners and the entries.